This is absolutely beautifully carved. It's like a proper tunnel. Oh my God. That is incredible. Right, we're inside the cave here. This is really happening. This is insane. Look how nicely carved this all is. Look at this. This is absolutely beautifully carved. It's like a proper tunnel. Oh my God. That is incredible. Look at this. You've got niches here. You've got two niches up there. That's the entrance. We are inside an incredible carved cave uh, in southeastern Anatolia, just to the west of Shanlurfa. Uh, this area has been earmarked as the site of a very important Tashtepala complex. Yeah, this is something that we got tipped off about myself and Andrew and JJ when we were there last time. We were investigating some of the unexcavated Tashtepala sites. Um, we were looking around at a few of them just to sort of see what was going on, see if we could find anything. Uh, and, they, and we got to know, we got chatting with the, the local kind of mayor, really, of this village, this guy who kind of, this elder of the village. And he brought out loads of artifacts. Um, I said, look, yeah, there's stuff going on here. We found cut marks in the area. But then we found, um, he said, look, there's a tunnel down there. It's 100 meters long, and it was 300 feet. And at the end of it is a carving of a warrior, we think. Now, we haven't been in there for years, um, and you're welcome to come and have a look sometime. So we were like, whoa, okay, we'll, we'll do that then. So we actually got around to doing it on our last trip. This We were, talk, we, we were there like a year ago, and we heard about it, but we've been at, not been able to investigate it since. So, yeah, we went down. You know, you got you got to remove your fear of like spiders and rats and things like this, and just just go down and hope for the best. And we did that. We went through this this kind of entrance, this covered over a bush. We got down there. It's pitch black. Uh, soot all over the walls. There's been fire in there a lot, and it slopes down at you know this angle all the way down. Um, and it's got a flat floor, but it's full of rubble now. Um, and these it's curved. You know, it's like. 20 feet wide but then every say 20 30 feet there's another kind of thing it kind of gets th slightly thinner as you kind of go down to the end and we couldn't get right down to the end because it's full of rubble but we did see worked stones down there like blocks we've been granted access to this incredible complex that we understand goes down about 100 meters um, and apparently you know, there are carvings at the end of it. The only problem is that it's very, very difficult to navigate. But what we have seen is these niches on the side, very well cut niches um, of different sizes. There's, there's one in front of me, there's another one by my side and others. And what you can see is the incredible smoothness of the walls, plus each different section uh, seems to be um, in a, a different relief uh, to the one before it. In other words, you've got um, like uh, almost like steps that go around the entire um, you know diameter of the actual cave that decrease the size, the width, and the height of it as it goes down. I mean, the one in front of me probably uh, shifts by uh, several centimetres and it continues to do that periodically towards the base. Now, the question then becomes, how old is this? We have no idea at the moment. We don't know whether it, it is from the Roman period, although it is similar to certain uh, descending shafts like this at Chayonu that I've investigated and I understand there's another one in the area of Nemrut Dar um, in the Adiyaman province. But this one I think is much longer. It's certainly better worked. Um, and is there a sneaky possibility that this could be related to the Tash Tepela complex at this locality? That is the big question right now. That's why we're here. Uh, we're still looking for carvings on the walls. Uh, I've just noticed here that there is a, a perfect square that's been carved out. Uh, that's obviously deliberate. 
Uh, now, whether that is meaningful or not, we don't know. Whether they intended creating some kind of uh, shaft, we don't know. Uh, but obviously, we shall continue to explore this site. As to its size, width-wise, it's around 10 feet, so around three meters in width. And in height, at its highest point, it's around uh, seven to eight feet. So two and a half meters in height. And the further you get down, the more rubble you find, the more difficult it is to navigate. But we've navigated as far as we possibly can on this, lo on this occasion, and we'll certainly be back. What we can also see is that there does appear to be parallel vertical lines above it and possibly evidence of, of other deliberate carving around it. Is it possible that this is the warrior figure that we were told was actually located within this cave system? Uh, certainly it's enigmatic, certainly it's suggestive of, of a square head and a headdress. Um, and clearly we'll continue to investigate this further. And we have no idea what's going on here. There's no record of it in the village. There's no record of it in the archaeological circles. And it's a giant undertaking. This is a serious engineering project. And you can see the tool marks, you know, the ancient tool marks. And it's just, we have no idea who built it. It's right in the middle of this Gebekli Tepe sized site that's not been excavated yet. And we just don't know. We we know that there's a spring at this particular site in this area. So we know that that could be to do, it could be a well, but why would you create such a large, beautifully carved, so deep? You could just carve a small hole into the ground, send a bucket down on a bit of rope. And it's like, so it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. It's a well. So it also has alignments, which we're working on. I'll be trying to work them out in a minute. And, um, now, if you're looking out from it, the sun would illuminate the whole thing at certain times of year, like it does Carahan Tepe through the whole stone, illuminating the stone head on the winter solstice. Close to the entrance of this cave complex, there are a couple of quite notable niches. Uh, the first one that you encounter has these curved interior walls, uh, has an opening of around um, one meter wide by one meter tall. And the carving looks quite similar to certain Tashtepala uh, rock architecture that we've seen, particularly at places like um, Karahan Tepe. But we shouldn't jump ahead of ourselves. This, this could be Roman period activity, but we are definitely going to look further into the age of this place and whether there is any chance at all that it could be Neolithic in origin. And I think what's important is that you have to ask the question, was there originally a cave here that was extended um, or is the whole thing being carved at one time? And if so, why? I mean, it seems to be orientated perfectly north-south. The direction that you go as you climb down into the cave is due north, meaning that the entrance is due south. Uh, so that's interesting. Perhaps the sun on a certain day, uh, when it reached that point, shone down into the cave. That is very possible indeed. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll try and get the angle of the cave before we leave. And by doing that, we can tell what time of year the sun would have actually shone down this shaft. That is a realization which is only coming to me as, as we talk, but I think that that is quite significant and we should um, look into that further. Here on the other side of the wall of the niches that we just described are other smaller ones, just burrowed slightly into the rock, uh, whether they are contemporary with the actual construction of the cave we can't say um, and what their purpose was we can't say I mean it is possible that this is some kind of necropolis but if it was then who was it built for was it built for somebody incredibly important a ruler of the area 
Um, or was it maybe a family tomb, for instance? But I'm going to say that in the knowledge that there are other much smaller hypogean style caves in this vicinity that probably would have um, been fine for anybody of, of any high status. This is something completely different. And I think that this has some kind of ritual functionality. The fact that it's orientated north-south, I think gives it away. And the fact that it almost certainly could allow the sun to shine all the way down it at a particular time of the year also needs to be looked at now. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know if it could have been built by the Romans for some reason, but why would they do it? Where does it lead? Does it does it continue? Does it then flatten out and continue across the landscape to other places? Is it a secret area where they kept treasure? What is it? What is going on here? So we are going to go back and have another look. we will be given permission to see what we come up with, see if we can get... We're going to get proper hazmat suits on this time because... I ruined some of my favorite explorer clothes um, just from the <laughs> soot everywhere, just completely covered in black soot. Um, there have been obviously a lot of fire going on down there at some point. So, so yeah, so we, yeah, we've got, we're going to keep looking. But it, yeah, it's just an anomaly. It just If that was anywhere else, that would be a big deal, but it's completely ignored. Or the archaeologists don't know much about it. You know, we, just, we, don't, we don't know. But this is why I feel it's so important and, and um, such a, a timely thing to go and look get out and look at these sites because um this is all happening now and you know stuff like that will be blocked off in the next few years once they start excavating